Hello, my sweet peeps. So uh, today I have uh, uh, an advanced English vocabulary masterclass for you. And by the end of this masterclass, you're going to have all the vocabularies that you need to express your ideas fluently and confidently. Welcome back to Junto com o Nativo. I'm Sa, and he is Daddy. Hello, Daddy. How are Hello. you doing? Welcome to Hello, another Sa. class. Yes. Uh, it's good to be here again. Uh, I have so much fun with this. Um, I hope to make it even more fun as the time goes on and we get more comfortable. But glad to see everyone here. And... I hope you guys are excited to learn a little more English. This one's going to be a little tougher, huh? So? Yes, for sure. Yes, let's learn together with that is help also. Yes? Yes. Okay. So now let's get started. We're going to start this masterclass with phrasal verbs because native speakers love use phrasal verbs. So knowing them will help you sound more fluent, more natural, and they will help you understand native speakers as well. So in this section, you learn a group of phrasal verbs and then you complete a quiz and then you move on and learn another group of phrasal verbs tomorrow. So let's get started with the first group. So let's get started with your first group number one. To come around to an opinion or an idea. And this means to change your opinion or see a new point of view. Now notice the sentence structure because we have two prepositions, around and to. And then after to, we need something, we need a noun, an opinion or an idea. For example, I came around to the new job after I heard about the benefits package. So remember, this means you changed your opinion so previously, you didn't want the new job, but now you've come around to it. So you've changed your opinion. Now you want the new job because you heard about the benefits package. You commonly use this without the preposition to and without specifying actually uh, something and uh, when something is mentioned and uh, daddy do you have some some uh, other example or something to mention about to come around to to come around as in uh no i don't really actually i don't have anything off the head you did you nailed that one really good um to come around, that would be the only thing. There's okay. a lot of ways to say it, but it's not working right now. Okay, good. So uh, let's move on. Could you read the, the next example? Yeah. At first, I didn't want to move to Boston, but I came around after I visited. Okay. So, uh, this example, at first I didn't want to move to Boston, but I came around after I visited. So, uh, notice I didn't say I came around to something because the something had already been mentioned. So I came around to the idea 
after I visited the uh... yes okay so let's move on uh, could you read that part daddy to get across it's a point of it means a point of a point or a message Gosh, point of view point. Yes. Clearly, to clearly, effectively communicate. Okay. Do you have something to mention about or to share some example? Well, yes. Yeah, so you to get your, uh, I say like to get your point across. You make sure it's outspoken and you're speaking to them so they understand what you're trying to get across to their, uh, so they get the idea the point, the message. Um, but do you add anything else? You go no, ahead. No. Yes, great. Great to add something else about to get across the number, the second yes. So to get across a point or a message, uh, this is when you clearly and effectively communicate a point or a message, for example. Uh, make sure you get across that the project over budget. So if you're having a meeting with a client and your boss has this very particular message or idea, the project is over budget and your boss wants you to communicate that in a clear, effective way, your boss wants you make sure you that uh, you get that across. Now you can use this when you're talking and talking and talking, and uh, the ideas aren't really coming out very well. And after a while, you stop and just say, "What I'm trying to get across is," and then you state your point what i'm trying to get across is the project is over budget so and then the the next one could you read yeah and to, share something about to deliberately display abilities skills accomplishments to impress people. No. No examples? Yes. Uh, about right now, no. Uh, okay. Uh, so to show off, what I could say about to show off? Um as he read before, this is when you deri deliberately display your skills or abilities, accomplishments, in a way to impress people, other people. Now, is that, this is, for example, <laughs> show off, yes? Point me to the gym. <laughs> yes. Oh, good, good, uh huh. Yes, yeah, some people, he is saying some people want to show off at the gym. And yes, there are many ways to show off the body. Yes. And that is a way to impress other people for sure. So this, this is frequently used in a negative. Don't show off like this picture. Don't show off. But there is definitely a time and a place when you want to show off. For example, when you're going to a job interview, you shouldn't be modest, modest. You should show off your skills and abilities. You should talk about all your awards, your accomplishments, your degrees uh, you've uh, received you want to show off all of your experiences to the interviewer. So an interview 
uh, that is the perfect time to show off. So, for example, you go in the IELTS exam, you don't be uh, so polite. You need to show off your abilities by using a range of grammatical structure and a range of phrasal verbs and idioms and expressions. You want to show off their interviewer. Yes, yeah, so now number four to count on. This is exactly the same as to rely on or to depend on. So you have three different phrasal verbs, all with on that mean the exact same thing. And this is, of course, when you trust someone or something, to complete a specific task or objective. For example, I can always count on Selma to stay late. So you can trust Selma to complete the specific task or objective, which is to stay late. And remember, you could replace this with rely on I can always rely on Selma or depend on, I can always depend on Selma. Now we frequently use this in a question response. For example, can I count on you? Can I count on you to close the deal? Of and course. then you can reply back and say, and say absolutely, you can count on me. Yes, Daddy, do you have something to mention about? Uh, I am talking uh, more, but no, you did. You 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 were spot on, darling. Um, yes, everything was good. No. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no examples. To no examples. No. You are on it. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Yes, here my pretty face. Yes. <laughs> okay. So to come between. It is a. Uh, just. See, I can't even read, babe. <laughs> to disturb. Disturb. <laughs> disturb a relationship, business social, family, or a romance, a romantic partner. So like the example, Jacob and Mark Maurice were best friends until It was Silva. supposed to be Michael's. <laughs> oh, way off. Marcus, Marcos? Yes. Maros, Maros. <laughs> Until Silva came between them. So one of them got a girlfriend, or they both liked the, the girl, and it caused a problem between the two. And now they're no longer friends, or they're just mad at each other. But <clears throat> to come between, or if you um, have a friend that came in between you and your your relationship, that would destroy a home. So that's coming between, or they came between. You got anything? I'm good. My brain's broken today. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so that's why the so to come between, yes. Um. Well. Uh, in that part, yes, to disturb a relationship. Yes. This is when something disturbs uh, a relationship, or and that that relationship can be a professional relationship, a social relationship, 
romantic family relationship it can be any kind of relationship for yes. example as uh, daddy read jacob and marcus were best friends and she, she became between them so uh, that image you could see they were close jacob and marcus but then Sylvie came between them and then and they now are divided. Sylvie disturbed their relationship. Now it's very common uh, for a girl or a guy uh, come between a relationship but it doesn't have to be a person. It could be Jacob and Marcus were very close but the promotion came between them. The new job came between them. Their family came between them. Their politics came between them. Their religion came between them. It could be anything came between them. Money is a good one as well that comes between people. Yes. In relationships and remember you can use this in any type of relationship yes for sure so now next one could you read that to her to put up with to put up with to tolerate bad, unwanted behavior. Like that example there. I don't know how you put up with your boss. There you go. You are the example taker. I'm not good at it like you. No, no, uh, I. I was uh, preparing this material, but it's good to listen to your reading because you you are an American and, and then you can uh, read it in a really good pronunciation. Yes. What's the S-T-S-O? Yes. What is so, that? Go ahead. What? S-T-S-O. Next to put up with something, yes. S T. Okay. Oh, yeah, some. I, I read and you can understand it. Something, yes, yes. I don't uh, do that. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, like to put up with uh something or someone. So something, S T. Yes, and someone, S O. I don't yeah. do that. Okay. <laughs> This is a two preposition uh, phrase of verb put up with. And uh, well, we use this to say that you tolerate bad behavior or unwanted behavior. So to put up with, for example, as that it read, I don't know how you put up with your boss. No. I don't know how you tolerate your boss. Now, of course, we can be more um, specific. And uh, the action that the boss does, I don't know how you put up with your boss. Uh, constant criticism, for example and your boss's distasteful jokes. Yes, so, uh, for example, I, I don't know how you tolerate it. How, now we commonly use this to say, I'm not going to put up with, and then the behavior, I'm not going to put up with your constant criticism any longer. 
Yes, so the next one, number seven. Could you reach it, Patty? To bounce back, it is to recover or re separate, recuperate. Ooh, darling, I am drowning. An example is, uh, I don't know how we'll bounce bounce back from our last loss in the la the second quarter. Or it took me a whole, or yeah, a while to bounce back after my surgery. I got. That's a deep in. <laughs> Yes, what could you read the example? Huh? You got a picture on yours? <laughs> I got a devil child on my picture. <laughs> yes, do you? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I could share it. <laughs> Did you share it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the heck is that? Oh, I didn't get a picture. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> oh, you did put it on there. Yes. That was a video. <laughs> What's up with the devil child? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes, so uh, in that one, the number seven, to bounce back, uh, well, now to bounce back, now this is when you recover or recuperate. Now you can use this when you recover from uh, a negative uh, situation in a business context. Like, uh, for example, he, as he, he read, uh, or a bad sales quarter, a uh, bad product, lunch, for example. But it can be also be when you recover, recuperate from illness. So you can use it in both those situations. For example, in a workplace situation, you could say, I don't know how will bounce back from our loss in K2. So I don't know how we'll recover. And then you could have a discussion how you can bounce back. Does anyone have any, any ideas on how we can bounce back? Now, in terms of recovering, or recuperate from an illness, you could say, it took me a while to bounce back after my surgery. So it took me a while to recover, recuperate. And now, number eight. To, to act, act up. up. Yes. To behave badly or strangely yes you read or before no fit. yes so uh yeah, that you want to behave badly or strangely you read before no <laughs> okay about the 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 bad boy the bad boy the 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 the, the boy yes that yes. took a picture so this is very commonly used to, with parents describing the actions of their young children or even their older children. My son keeps acting up, behaving badly, but we can also use this with devices and objects, for example, my computer keeps acting up, behaving strangely. 
my computer keeps acting up. I hope it doesn't break. Yes. Do you have something to to mention that part? Something else? Uh, my computer keeps acting up. Yeah, like um, every time you try to do something, it goes the opposite direction. Makes you frustrated. So usually when something like yeah, kind of has a brain of its own, that's going to make you frustrated. It's acting up. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, great. Yeah, so we could use it in both senses, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, could you read the next one, Daddy? I'll make it up to the, yeah. I'm so sorry, I can't make your birthday party. I promise, though, I will I make it up to you. I can't read your day. <laughs> What's happened? Okay. By taking you out for a nice dinner, by going to the movies with you, by buying you a really nice necklace. Yes. Or, yes. <laughs> Good idea. Yes. <laughs> I really appreciate. Yeah. Okay, yes. So, uh, to make it up to someone, this is a uh, quite a long one. So, pay attention to this sentence structure to make it make uh, to make it up to someone. Now we use this when you try to compensate for a uh, wrongdoing. For example, as he read, let's say it's your best friend's birthday and you can't go for whatever reason. So this is the wrongdoing, not going to your best friend's birthday party. Now, if you want to compensate uh, for that wrongdoing, you could say, I'm so sorry, I can't make your birthday party. I promise I will make it up to you. I will make it up to you by taking you out for a nice dinner. I will make it up to you by going to the movies with you. I will make it up to you by buying you a really nice present. So those are the ways you're going to compensate. Now you might be wondering what is this it, the make it up to someone. We use it because what you're trying to compensate for has already been explained so you don't have to say it again. Now you can use this in a business context. Let's say you went over budget in a, on a client project and you might say to your team, how are, you, how are we going to make it up to the client? How are we going to compensate for our wrongdoing? The wrongdoing is you went over budget and then maybe someone would suggest we can make it up to them by offering a discount or offering a free product or offering an extra service. So those are how you are going to compensate for the wrongdoing to make it up to someone and let's move on to the number 10 to barge in to barge in to enter a place unexpected and interrupt 
Like example, I was in my office working and this kid just barged in and handed me his, I mean, CV, CV, Cartoons Network, CV. CV. And do you have something else to mention? Some other example? Well, like you can use, we, we, you can use barge in when someone's talking and you interrupt them by talking over them. That would be barging in also. Um, let's say uh, there was a bunch of drunk guys walking down the highway and they barged into the bar, stumbling and having a good time. Oh, good. Uh, that would be bad. <clears throat> um, actually, barges actually <clears throat> something that cleans the the bay out, also of an estuary. Uh, nope, that's about it for me. Uh, night, everybody. Okay. Just kidding. Yes. Just kidding. <laughs> yes, that's uh, all. Already the last one. Yes. That we combined, no? So, uh, yeah. that we, it was the, the for today class. And, uh, yes, what I can add about to barge in, uh, that it mentioned some other example and explained something else that's amazing. Yes? And, uh, what else could I say about that? To barge in, when you barge in, you enter a place, a location, unexpectedly and uh, interrupted. That is a long word. <laughs> unexpectedly and in, uh, and interrupt whatever taking place. For example, I was in my office working and this kid just barged in and handed me his CV. But later, I hired him. So by saying the kid barged in, it implies that he didn't have an appointment. He wasn't expected. Just He just barged in in unexpectedly and uh, he interrupted whatever I was working. But in this case, it was successful because he got the job. So now you have the first group. So let's complete your quiz. Yes, you guys have a Quiz one to ten. Here are the questions for the quiz. You need to complete each sentence using the correct phrasal verbs. So go ahead and hit pause now and complete the quiz. So now hit pause and see how well you did. So make sure you share your score in the comments. And now let's continue. Uh, in the next time, in the next day, that is tomorrow. And uh, Daddy, do you have something to mention? Anything mm -hmm. else? That was, fun. that was new for me even. So okay. um, I actually learned some stuff on it. I mean, a little bit, but you did a wonderful job uh, so, on explaining all those. Very oh, good. I hate. Yeah. <laughs> You, you were definitely prepared. Uh, I am just a little sleepy tonight. Oh, yes, but uh, I invite 
to you. And uh, thanks uh, to come, even though uh, I have prepared and uh, you could uh, even uh, read for us. And that's yes. amazing to, to listen to your voice. And uh, uh, you told some examples that can add for us also. And just your company is always, always good because all people, uh, they like to see you here. Uh, always no and yeah. that's good <laughs> i enjoy it also so anyways well, thanks a lot <laughs> thanks everybody thank see you. you guys bye bye kisses bye -bye. see you tomorrow see you tomorrow don't forget to subscribe and and uh, see you see you soon kisses bye bye see you tomorrow thanks then